a century. 100 years of worship on the same special piece of ground, growing in parallel with the new model city. From a half acre lot to a full city block and beyond, of messages and music, births and baptisms, the congregation of First Baptist Church of Kingsport has written its history on the circle in the heart of the city. Loving God and loving people, bridging generations. This is some of that story. An old saying around here is, there is only one Kingsport. Actually, there have been two. The one you know today, and an earlier one along the river near the Netherland Inn. It took many names like Boatyard before settling on a single word, unpossessive Kingsport. Originally incorporated in 1822, it was a bustling center of commerce in early East Tennessee. Although there were Baptist churches around the area, there weren't any in Kingsport until 1854, when a church was organized and a building built somewhere in this area behind the Netherland Inn. Now, when the railroad came through, they had to move the church. They settled in Lovedale as the Pierce Memorial Baptist Church. Old Kingsport's economy was based on Holston River shipping. A new railroad bypassed Kingsport. No longer competitive, the town began to disappear. But years later, an entrepreneur named George L. Carter achieved the long-attempted goal of building a railroad through the mountains to connect the Clinch coal fields with port access in South Carolina. Carter's company bought not only right-of-way, but thousands of acres along the route, including prime valley land along the south fork of the Holston River near the old village of Kingsport. But Carter became overextended and sold out to a group of investors led by the New York firm of Blair & Company. They sent John B. Dennis to manage their interest and develop a new Kingsport, and hired Carter's brother-in-law, J. Fred Johnson, to promote it and run day-to-day -day operations. Engineer William Dunlop had already sketched plans incorporating zones for industry near the river and railroad, a commercial area above the railroad, and residential areas toward the gently rising hillsides beyond. Innovative city planner John Nolan expanded Dunlop's outline to lay out the city. Soon, an impressive number of industries had begun operations, and the downtown was starting to build from Main Street and upward on Broad Street. To balance these commercial aspects of the new city, its planners had also reserved space for civic and spiritual concerns where the downtown grid transformed into a spoken wheel design, centering on what would soon be known as Church Circle. Religious groups took turns meeting at the recently constructed school building where the First Presbyterian Church is today. The number of new Baptists in town was growing rapidly, and in association with members from Pierce Memorial, they planned a new church for the new city. With thoughts of avoiding troubles that had plagued other boom towns, the Kingsport Improvement Company had reserved lots around their proposed circle for churches. A local farmer, banker, and businessman named William Roller saw the need to kickstart the new Baptist church and in 1916 personally financed construction of a building on Block 50, lot number one. Later, someone asked him if he belonged to First Baptist Church. Roller, known for being a serious businessman but with a dry sense of humor, replied, No, First Baptist Church belongs to me. The improvement company conveyed the property, slightly more than half an acre, to the new congregation for the sum of one dollar, and the church eventually repaid Roller. Although the first worship service was held in the new building on January 14, 1917, due to problems with the heating system, the formal organizational meeting for First Baptist Church was held at the Strand Theater, later renamed the Gem Theater, on January 21st. The impressive Gothic brick building had two towers facing Sullivan Street and a back entrance with a porte cochere for discharging passengers off Holston Street. The structure was set back some distance from the circle toward the back side of the pie-shaped lot. It was the first church building constructed in the new city. The congregation grew steadily and the building became an important center of activity for the booming city. 
Its towers provided a striking backdrop for early city life, including the athletic fields located downtown. The new church called Reverend E.K. Cox as its first pastor. E.K. Cox left for another church in 1919, but the young congregation found an able interim in Dr. John H. Clifford, who had been brought to Kingsport by J. Fred Johnson to organize the YMCA. A former medical missionary and chaplain to the U.S. Marines, Dr. Clifford was an accomplished leader and although raised in England, knew how to speak the language of Tennessee, putting everyone at ease in the midst of summer heat in pre-air conditioned days. His wife, Jeanette Clifford was quite a speaker herself and preached a sermon at First Baptist, quite unusual for a woman in those days, or in some Baptist circles, even today. While William Roller may not have claimed membership, he remained active in the development of First Baptist Church. Accompanying the pastor to the Baptist Layman's Convention in Atlanta and later making a very large contribution to help the young church meet its goal for the Southern Baptist Convention's centenary campaign. Kingsport is a brand new model city and there's a brand new Baptist church in town. In 1919, First Baptist Church called Reverend S.B. Ogle as its second pastor. Ogle was a passionate advocate for his congregation and used the opportunity of the city's young newspaper to great effect. He also promoted the church in an extremely well-written pamphlet published on the church's fifth anniversary. A copy is in our history room. The pastor cared for and encouraged his young flock. Early on, music became an integral part of worship for the new congregation. Doc Clifford's son Howard organized a choir upon his arrival in Kingsport in 1919. He remained its director on a volunteer basis for 30 years. For evening services, special music was provided by a male quartet composed of the pastor, a lawyer, and two physicians. New Sunday school classes kept springing up. With great reluctance, Pastor Ogle accepted a call in 1923 from a much larger church in West Virginia. Members of First Baptist Church were sorry to see him go, and even though Ogle's passionate nature got him into personal trouble later, he was remembered fondly by the membership here. Dr. J.K. Haynes was the next pastor, but remained here less than a year, accepting a call from a church in Knoxville. Dr. Sam Martin came to First Baptist in 1925 and saw overflowing worship service crowds and new neighborhoods being built at the edges of town. In 1927, the church established a mission in Oakdale, or Borden Mill Village. This would later become Calvary Baptist Church. Although the original First Baptist Church building was only 10 years old, by 1927 it was already too small to accommodate the crowds of worshipers. Membership had increased from 91 members at the end of 1917 to over 500. Pastor Sam Martin persuaded the congregation that it was time to expand. The church hired architect Wellington Wallace from the Home Mission Board to design a new building. His design was quite a departure from the original building's Gothic architecture, which matched the train station and older buildings along Main Street. The new structure would be a neoclassic design, which would soon harmonize with the other churches around the circle to form a park-like setting. Wallace found a way to use much of the original building, orienting a new sanctuary toward the circle and surrounding the heart of the old structure with Sunday school wings. The old sanctuary would be transformed into the assembly room for adult Sunday school. Ground was broken in February of 1927. The old towers and Holston Street entrance would be demolished to make way for the new building. The cornerstone was set into place, and a full day of meetings and celebrations marked the opening day Sunday on October 30th. With the new sanctuary seating nearly 900 people and a massive exposure along Sullivan Street, which was then the route for two U.S. highways, First Baptist Church was a dominant force in the model city. Large crowds attended the new building. A few months later, installation of Kingsport's first pipe organ was completed 
and First Baptist Church was the go-to place for all sorts of community musical events. Kathleen Morton served as the first organist, a position she held for 21 years. The next year, Dr. Martin was called to a large church in Newport, Kentucky. Reverend D. Edgar Allen became First Baptist's fifth pastor later in 1928. In 1929, a revival was held in Borden Mill Village, resulting in 95 professions of faith, with baptisms held at First Baptist. Soon, the mission became Calvary Baptist Church. The next year, a revival was held in the Westview area, and with the assistance of Reverend Allen, Westview Baptist Church was organized with George Coldiron as pastor. Coldiron was a local merchant who had been active in the First Baptist Sunday School and other programs, and soon felt the call to the ministry. He was ordained in 1927 and served here as assistant pastor for two years. His daughter Sarah would sing in our choir and son Jack would become a soloist and teacher of voice at Southwestern Seminary and Baylor University. George Coldiron served as Westview pastor 31 years before transitioning to educational director at the age of 72. He passed away while attending a revival at Westview. Edgar Allen left in June of 1931, and Dr. Robert Wyatt became pastor of First Baptist later that year. Wyatt followed up a citywide revival with a full month of meetings at the church and announced that membership increased by 715 during the period. Sunday School recorded a record attendance of 1,083 in January of 1932. Although the church was experiencing unprecedented growth, Wyatt also took some actions that divided the congregation. While he was certainly not the first pastor to preach against dancing, he went beyond this to publicly condemn the Dobbins Bennett prom, going so far as calling for the resignation of the principal and school superintendent, Ross N. Robinson. One of the church deacons wrote a letter to the editor in strong disagreement, and some believe the pastor was setting economic classes against one another. In early 1933, Wyatt delivered a sermon titled, Shall I Resign? And a week later, during a church conference, he did just that, and announced that he was forming a new church, taking a number of members with him. The Baptist Temple held meetings at a building on East Charlemont Street and had a couple hundred members for a while. But when a delegation from First Baptist addressed that congregation to invite them back home, Wyatt resigned there and most of the members returned to First Baptist. The Baptist Temple continued for a few months before disappearing. Meanwhile, former pastor J.K. Haynes again served at First Baptist for a few months before returning to Knoxville. Later that year, Dr. J. Gillum Hughes accepted a call as pastor. In early 1934, First Baptist helped establish a mission on Long Island, and the Long Island Baptist Church was organized later that year. Carlisle Marney became First Baptist's first Minister of Education in 1935, serving until 1938. He later went on to become a prominent Baptist pastor. In 1937, Sullivan Baptist Church was organized with help from First Baptist. The sanctuary originally had plain glass windows, but memorial gifts funded installation of stained glass in 1938. There are six windows on each side and three along the front side of the building facing the circle. The art glass was crafted by artisans in Czechoslovakia and incorporated numerous biblically inspired symbolic elements. The sanctuary and foyer windows featured centered designs depicting important themes the Gospel writers Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Open Bible with Alpha and Omega, Bethlehem, the Crown and Cross, Greek letters Alpha and Omega, Rock of Ages with the Cross of Christ, IHS, abbreviation for the name Jesus in Greek, Communion Cup with Pearl of Great Price, Crown with Anchor, and a dove with light from heaven. A round window featuring a Greek cross in the baptistry was added in 1979 
as a memorial to Mr. and Mrs. W.B. Ramey. An opal glass window was installed in the restored chapel in 1992 as a memorial to Lowell Abbott. First Baptist Church found new ways to reach people. In 1940, First Baptist Church services were first broadcast on radio. A couple of years earlier, headphones for hearing assistance had been installed in the sanctuary seating area. In 1942, what had been the sanctuary from the original building was divided into Sunday school rooms and offices. Ceilings hid the old roof beams for 50 years. While serving as the president of the Tennessee Baptist Convention in 1941, Dr. Hughes accepted the pastorate of a church in Memphis and Dr. L.B. Cobb became pastor in October of 1941. The church building was certainly impressive, it was also quite expensive, and it had been financed through borrowing. Soon after its completion, the nation had been plunged into the Great Depression. Although Kingsport fared better than most places, it was not immune to the effects of this economic calamity. Cash was short, and some companies paid their workers with scrip. 33 members had signed personal guarantees for repayment of the loan on the building. Several times, the membership had to give sacrificially to avoid default. An attorney and church leader, T.R. Bandy, frequently used his skills to hold off creditors. Finally, in 1944, the loan was paid off, and the congregation, with great relief, held a dedicatory service and note-burning ceremony. The growth of Sunday school and other training highlighted the role of the Minister of Education. Following Carlisle Marnie, or Lawrence Trivett, from 1939 to 1943, Claude Gilstrap from 1945 to 1948, Mrs. Freddie Clark from 1951 to 1953, Robert Medeiros from 1954 to 1961, Bob McGee from 1964 to 1965, Greer Rubel from 1966 to 1984, and Mitchell Wisnant from 1984 to the present. Even as First Baptist grew, it saw the need to help develop a network of churches around the greater Kingsport area. Some of these started as First Baptist missions, some were in conjunction with other churches, and some involved financial or other support. FBC already had offspring in Calvary and Westview and helped with Long Island and Sullivan Baptist churches. Next came State Line, Lynn Garden, Litz Manor, Bloomingdale, Cedar Grove, Fort Robinson, Springdale, Sunnyside, Gravelly, Orbank, Reservoir Road, and Colonial Heights Baptist Churches. In addition to regular cooperative program support for missions, the church provided special support to homegrown members who served as foreign missionaries. Mr. and Mrs. Charles Compton as missionaries to Brazil in 1950-1972, Pauline Martin, Nigeria, from 1956 to 1996, and Charles and Betty Biedenbaugh, Tanganyika, later renamed Tanzania, from 1960 to 1991. Our steeple was originally smaller than what we have today, and during much of the 40s featured an unusual pattern of a cross on the pediment window and stars on the sides of the steeple. There are visible dots on both. Could they be light bulbs? In 1948, the church erected a much larger steeple designed by Alan Dryden, incorporating an 18-bell carillon dedicated to the men and women of the church who fought in World War II. The church had kept them in focus throughout the war, dubbing them its military missionaries, with banners and a display of members in the service. The carillon incorporated large tubular bells and a system similar to a player piano with timers to play hymns a couple of times a day, in addition to Westminster chimes every quarter hour. An aural presence in downtown Kingsport for many years, the carillon's operation declined over the years and was removed in the renovation of the early 90s. The memorial plaque in the lobby stairwell remains. Pastor Cobb was elected president of the Tennessee Baptist Convention in 1947. In April 1948, he announced plans to go into full-time evangelism, but six weeks later, he agreed to remain after a church conference described as tense increased his salary. But in November, he left for another church. 
In July of 1949, Dr. E. Gibson Davis became pastor. As the church continued to grow with the advent of baby boomers after the war, it again needed more space. In 1959, the church acquired its first expansion property, an adjacent storefront building, and demolished it to construct an educational building. This large four-story building, completed in 1961, contained numerous Sunday school department and classrooms and even featured a roof garden, complete with recreational areas including volleyball and a grill. Another lot on Holston Street was also obtained for a parking lot and recreational area. Following the opening of this building, Dr. Davis announced his retirement. This marked something of a turning point in terms of First Baptist standing as a pastoral position. Prior to that, the ministers had moved up to other larger churches after serving here. But after this, all the pastors have retired from active ministry after completing their pastorates here, which have been longer tenures. During 1962 and 1963, the church undertook a complete renovation of the sanctuary. A primary change was seating. The old wooden opera seats were replaced by pews. We didn't have air conditioning in those days, and the, there was a stain on the seats. And if you were there in the summertime with white clothes on, a white suit or a white dress or a suit, you came away from perspiration and on the back side you were all pink from having the fading of the finish on the seats come off on your clothes. Among other changes were chandeliers, a change in the steps in front of the church, and large gold lettering on the pediment letting the world know that this was First Baptist Church. Meanwhile, Dr. William J. Perdue accepted the church's call as pastor. Morning worship services were televised on cable channel 4 beginning in November 1965, while radio broadcasts continued on different stations for morning and evening services. As the 50th anniversary of the church approached, the cornerstone was removed from the building to see if there might be historical information. There was indeed a strong box located behind the cornerstone, but it was empty except for a Bible. However, a local historian found old newspaper stories establishing the organizational date as January 21st, 1917. Toward the end of the 60s, a long-range planning committee investigated how church facilities would meet future needs. Based on their report, plans were drawn up for expansion that would double the church physical plant. All the remaining properties on the block, bounded by Sullivan, Charlemont, and Holston Streets, were purchased. The plan included a new 1,600-seat sanctuary with underground parking and a wing with a fellowship hall, gymnasium, office area, and preschool. But when bids came in, they were much higher than expected. The low bid was $2.4 million, or $16 million in 2017 dollars. The church pursued the most needed additions and deferred others. The new sanctuary would have to wait. Meanwhile, a convenient parking lot would be built on its site and work got underway on the badly needed activities wing, finished in 1972. The fellowship hall provided a much more functional place for large meetings and especially for meals. The gym provided much needed space for all weather recreation and outreach to the community. New areas for children made possible new preschool and Mother's Day Out programs. Space was provided for expanded First Baptist offices and for a few years housed the new Sullivan Baptist Association. The church library found a much more spacious home. Miss Addie Burke retired as a church secretary in 1972. She had joined First Baptist Church in 1923 and had joined the staff in 1945. Among other things, she started the church library. Her work with the church continued on a volunteer basis for some time. The church now added staff to meet changing needs, including ministries of youth, activities, students, children, and senior adults. Leading those programs have been David Downing, Larry Meredith, Bobby Piercy, Robin Lindsay Wilson, Michael McKnight, James and Trish Jackson, Jackie Dolan, Danny Sylvie, Cindy Francisco Woodworth, 
Penny Kelly, Carrie Upshaw, and Mark Sumrall. Dr. William J. Perdue retired in 1979, and Dr. Frank Hawkins was called as pastor the next year. Chip Bishop served as associate pastor from 1981 to 1987, and Ron Davis became associate pastor in 1989, retiring in 2015. Danny Sylvie transitioned to associate pastor in 2016. In 1982, First Baptist launched a full-service senior residential facility named Baysmont. As construction was getting underway, the Holston Presbytery joined the project. In 1989, Asbury Communities purchased the complex and now operates it as Asbury Place Kingsport, Baysmont Campus. A number of First Baptist members continue to reside there and the center continues to expand. A theatrical lighting system added greater visibility to the pulpit area, as well as providing dramatic effects for church plays and musicals. The system was given by Mr. and Mrs. Dan Bramlett in honor of their daughters in church work. 1991 to 1992 saw the largest renovation in church history. Every part of the church campus was affected. A welcome center by the semicircle off Holston Street provided direct access to both the sanctuary and educational buildings. Matching brick covered the walkway to the activities building with a direct entrance added to the church office area. The sanctuary had a facelift. Pilasters lined up with ceiling beams with new barrel vaulted ceilings and recessed lighting. The old chandeliers would find their way to the fellowship hall, which was enlarged. The size of the pulpit area increased and new audio-visual equipment was installed in the sanctuary and fellowship hall. An elevator permitted stair-free access to all floors. Over the years, water pipes and drains, sprinkler systems, and electrical conduit had been installed with little regard to appearance. The renovation concealed unsightly fixtures and added new floor coverings, ceilings, and lighting. What had been the pastor's study was transformed into the history room. And finally, the men of the choir no longer had to put their robes on out in the open. Perhaps the most exciting feature of the renovations was the chapel, built from the upper space of the original sanctuary, which had been hidden and unused for 50 years. The architects finally found a way to build a floor, and with the original 1916 roof, this reclaimed jewel is now used again for meetings, weddings, funerals, and other special occasions, as well as a place for quiet meditation or prayer. Frank Hawkins retired in 1999. Dr. Marvin Cameron came as pastor in 2001 and continues to serve to this day. Although styles have changed over the years, worship at First Baptist Church has involved the same basic elements for 100 years. Prayer, we are united in joining our hearts to God. Scripture, God's Word, a roadmap for our lives. The message, preaching God's redemptive love for us and how it applies to our lives. Baptism and the Lord's Supper, special parts of worship that provide a common tie among all believers and remind us of Jesus' sacrifice and triumph over the grave. And one element that has continually tied all these things together through the years has been music, whether old or new, hymns, anthems, or praise songs. When Howard Clifford came to town in 1919, he organized the first choir. He remained its director for 30 years. The choir, though modest in size, worked hard to provide inspirational music done with the quality demanded in its setting. Following Clifford's long volunteer service as choir director, First Baptist added full-time ministers of music to lead and develop the musical component of worship. Reverend David Byler was first from 1950 to 1952. A recent seminary graduate and tenor soloist, he developed a children's and a youth choir which sang for Sunday evening services. Wilbert Kerr served as minister of music from 1953 to 1958. In addition to leading music, he was a bass soloist. He continued to expand the musical program, increasing the number of choirs to six, with more than 200 enrolled. 
Edwin Miller became Minister of Music in 1958. He was an operatic quality baritone soloist. If you cannot sing like the angels, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and how he died. He served the church until leaving for Gatlinburg in March 1961, where his wife would also serve as organist. William Robinson came in 1963 and started new programs, including the church orchestra, along with vocal ensembles and handbell choirs. Community performances provided church outreach. A record was released for Christmas 1974 featuring the Youth Handbell Choir and others. The Adult Handbell Choir is now led by Judy Hooker and continues to provide music for worship. The orchestra has continued to grow and after Bill Robinson's retirement has been led by Danny Lancaster, Shana Edwards, and current conductor Brandon Woods. The Robinson family, all singing and playing instruments, performed widely, including a concert for the Church Music Conference of the Southern Baptist Convention. Shortly before Bill Robinson's retirement in 1992, the grown children reunited for a farewell concert at First Baptist. They've not left their musical heritage behind them. Three, Bill Jr., Bob, and Susan Robinson Hoover, lead music in Baptist churches. After deciding not to build a new sanctuary, First Baptist instead added an additional Sunday morning service, and Robinson led worship and choirs in both. William Simpson served as Minister of Music from 1994 to 1999. During his tenure, the early service was converted to a contemporary format, and he developed the new service, played guitar, and led worship music. He also continued to lead the traditional service music. When Simpson left, Susan Robinson Hoover served first as interim and then Minister of Music in 2001. She had been hired as organist upon the retirement of Mary Frances Gregory in 1984 and promoted to organist music associate in 1989. As music associate, she directed children's choirs and produced numerous musicals with elaborate sets, costumes, lighting, and sound. The average size of the choir has been increasing, so the choir rail has been eliminated and seats have replaced choir pews. The space is much more flexible to accommodate overflow choir seating or other use. The original organ console was in front of the baptistry. The molar organ console moved forward to the front of the loft, still requiring mirrors to see the director. When the Schantz organ was installed in 1977, the console was placed within a railing on the main floor. The pipes of the two earlier organs were completely invisible within the organ chamber, but the Schantz featured pipes visible on a ledge above the choir loft. Last year, a new digital sound system with advanced monitoring was installed along with new LED lighting and updated video projection and monitors. The design provides for appropriate use for both contemporary and traditional services. Children's music programs have been reorganized into Little Troublemakers for preschoolers and the children's choir Seeds, which focuses on scripture set to music. There's a youth praise band and an annual young artist concert provides an opportunity for children and youth to showcase their music regardless of genre. The Sounds of Faith Men's Ensemble provides frequent leadership and worship with a variety of musical styles ranging from gospel to traditional. Reflections, or Senior Adult Choir, often serves by singing at nursing homes and assisted living centers. Music associate Jessica Hatfield leads contemporary service worship music and provides vocals, working with a praise band and praise choir. Lyrics of praise songs are displayed on screens around the sanctuary. Contemporary and traditional musicians join forces from time to time, including special concerts and as the backup choir for Sandy Patty on two occasions. First Baptist has been fortunate to have talented instrumentalists assisting with worship. After Kingsport's first pipe organ was installed in 1928, Kathleen Morton played for 20 years. Mary Frances Gregory followed her and would serve for 35 years. After Susan Hoover became Minister of Music, a number of organists have provided music for services 
including David Cody, Garrett Martin, Landry Duval, and current organist Edwin Logan. Pianists have included Mrs. E.M. Geiger, Louis Figg, Mrs. Jean Conway, and Carrie Upshaw, among others. 1920s evening service music was provided by the male quartet. The choir was also accompanied by violinist Mrs. M.K. Sams. We are fortunate today to have talented musicians of many instruments. First Baptist Church has been blessed by a number of talented soloists. Notable vocalists from the past have included Keith Hamilton Gregory, Melvin Johnson, I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, Rosemary Smith, and still singing in the choir, Doug Smith. And we didn't know who you were. Aside from worship, the Sunday School has been the leading program of First Baptist Church for all its 100 years. Sunday School continues teaching the good news based on the Bible. Classes have been organized and added from the cradle world to senior adults and now offer diverse approaches to Bible study. Hundreds of dedicated workers have given service in this way. Some of them sacrifice sleep to do it. Charles Goodwin, professional musician with his own big band orchestra, often had Saturday night engagements miles away, but would arrange it so he could get back to play Sunday morning at First Baptist Church. Yes, he would often play organ or piano for worship services, but felt his main obligation was to play piano in Sunday school assemblies for children. His most requested church piano solo was an arrangement of Jesus Loves Me. The WMU organized soon after the church's formation. Newspaper articles through the years show more notices for women's programs than any other activity of the church. This was particularly true during the Circle era, with weekly meetings held at homes all over town. The women also sponsor programs for children, including GAs and RAs. First Baptist Church continues its affiliation with the Sullivan Baptist Association, Tennessee Baptist Convention, and Southern Baptist Convention. Members may also choose to designate offerings to either the Cooperative Program or the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, of which First Baptist is a top 200 giving church. Deacons have provided leadership and service to the church body through the use of their spiritual gifts since the congregation's inception. In 1999, after much prayerful consideration, First Baptist Church began ordaining women as deacons. Many church programs are carried out by volunteers. In addition to Sunday school, First Baptist members serve on mission trips, help with baptism and communion, vacation Bible school, music, upward basketball and cheerleading, tutoring, Habitat for Humanity, sound booth, and much more. In addition to the Ministry of Encouragement brought to the church by Pastor Frank Hawkins. First Baptist Church purchased nearby properties as they became available. In 1983, a large parking lot was constructed on lots purchased on Charlemont Street. In 1992, the church purchased and demolished the Homestead Hotel, which had been a familiar landmark in Kingsport, but had fallen into disrepair. Adjacent to this lot on Clay Street was an office building, which had also become available and was purchased by the church for its growing outreach ministries. The counseling ministry had been started by former associate pastor Ron Davis with sessions held in offices or rooms in the main campus, but the purchase of 441 Clay Street provided a better private setting. It has spun off into the nonprofit Covenant Counseling Center, located in Suite 2 with an entrance on the back side of the building. Beth Kitzmiller is the director. 
After a church-wide visioning effort in 2005, the Providence Medical Clinic was started to provide free medical care for low-income residents of Kingsport. Its scope has greatly expanded over the years. The church continues to sponsor the Amazing Grace 5K to support the nonprofit clinic. Its entrance is also at the rear of the building. Dr. Marta Waite is the medical director and Michelle Campbell is clinical director. Recovery at Clay Street provides help for those troubled by hurts, hangups, and habits. Formerly Celebrate Recovery, this ministry provides a 12-step Christian-based program to help those with a variety of personal issues or addictions. Jack Carpenter provides leadership and meetings are now held on Wednesday evenings. The entrance is in the front or Clay Street side of the building. Finally, a part of Supermarket Row on West Sullivan Street between Clay and Revere Streets was purchased in 2006 and after a review of the buildings showed them to be unusable, they were demolished and grass planted until future use is identified. The large parking lot is available for church use. To unify the church structures and provide better access on the west side of the church campus, First Baptist finished in 2016 a new connecting building featuring a grand atrium and two-level entrances, a multi-purpose room and a lower area providing up-to-date preschool and children's programs with secure play area. It's not just for aesthetics. So what's the point of building this building? Was it for us to have a great place to gather like this? Well, it's wonderful. Was it for us to have more rooms, that's wonderful. But the reason we're here, the only reason we're here, is to show people Jesus. So, the First Baptist Campus started with the new city's first church in 1916, but expanded just 10 years later with a new sanctuary and Sunday school wings. An educational building was added, and then the church acquired the rest of the property on the block and built the new activities building and a parking lot. Then, two more parking lots and 441 Clay Street became the busy home of FBC Outreach Ministries. Across the street, a block of Supermarket Row was added with a large parking lot available and space for future use. The newly constructed building at Sullivan and Charlemont completes the plan for the main block with growth in the future to come beyond. Next time on First Baptist Church of Kingsport, it's time to start thinking about the next 100 years. We've had a great history, but it's up to you, the congregation, to develop the storyline to be reported 100 years from now.